It starts off and I'm alone. Or I think I am. I look at my hands and they're old hands. Like I feel older. And not just physically, I can feel the weight of experience of my brain overflowing with memories of my soul thinning I know I've been here for a while I know I came here to die and I know I came here to write something down a story I don't know who for it but it is the story of a distant memory a memory that I've held on to while every other memory would fade away as if it had never happened, I would hold on to this one. Keep it alive. I don't know why. There wasn't anything particularly special about this memory. I just simply couldn't let it die. And now, in my last days, here I was, attempting to prolong its life. Even after I fade away, with the rest of my memories, I wanted it to live on. Flynn. Flynn. Hey, come on, you all right, buddy? Eat up, eat up. I mean, you've been looking a little pale lately. Look, um, I'm sorry, John. No, 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 listen. Tell me more about this uh, memory and uh, this dream. No, I'm sorry, man. I, I invite you out as a friend, and here we are hopping into one of our sessions. Yeah. I just, I, I, for some reason, I needed to desperately talk to someone about this, but after all you've done for me in the past, I... Flynn, Flynn, it's fine. I, but now listen. These memories that you've been having in these dreams are going to require really intensive therapy. You better pay for breakfast, I think it's only fair. <laughs> Come on, listen, before we get into that stuff, why don't we talk about something else? Um, how's your writing going? <laughs> Flynn. Flynn, come on. You haven't been backsliding again, have you? No, 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 John, I have. I okay, well, I, I know we made a lot of progress, and uh, you would tell me if things are getting really bad again, right? Yes, John, yes. I, I, and it's not about that. It actually has to do with my writing. Okay. I, I've been having a lot of these um, major breakthroughs, if you, if you can call them that. Inspiration. And, and, and for, for a while, I was just drowning in it. Well, that's great, Flynn. I mean, uh, I remember talking to your doctor about that. We argued about it, and I always felt that your writing was a healthy thing. I started thing seeing for this you. girl. Um, by seeing, you mean what? Uh, not in the literal sense. Oh, but it was as if I had suddenly remembered someone, someone important. To, to my life who affected it, and, and, and yet I had somehow completely forgotten her. But she's not somebody that you met before. John, have you, have you ever met a person or, or, or people and, and, and gotten to know them really well? I mean, just really connected with them on a deep personal level, you, you, you know? Maybe even just absolutely fallen in love with uh, all their, their little quirks, their, their little idiosyncrasies, those little scars the little ridges that make them so indi in individual and then just completely forgot them. Just <laughs> completely leave behind the world you created with them. So, so, so it, it's almost as if in the scheme of your life, your relationship with them exists only in this little bubble. Yeah, I, I suppose. I, I started having this, this reoccurring, I, I, I don't know what you call it, this, this reoccurring memory only I can't be sure if it actually is a memory if, or, or, or if it's something I read in a, a book or saw in a movie or maybe it's something I dreamt long ago, but it's in there. Her face is etched in there. Her personality and all the things I loved and hated about her, I can, I can see them 
in this memory, we're laying together in, in, on the grass in this field and there's trees lining the field. And, and, and it's this beautiful night and we're staring up at the sky and it's this deep, deep blue, no, more of a purple color. And, 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 and it was beautiful. And there was this, this meteor shower this meteor shower starts and we're staring up up in the sky and these meteors are coming one after another, just one after another. And, and, we're, and we're staring at the sky in awe and we're staring at each other and, and, and that's it. She exists only in that little bubble in my memory. Now I can't even remember her name. And that's what's given you so much inspiration, I take it? Yeah, because the thing is, I'm not even sure if it's a memory that has happened or not. But at the same time, in that memory, I feel as though I loved her. And then somehow, I just let her get covered with thousands and thousands and thousands of other memories that are so meaningless and, 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 and pale, and lifeless. Well, look, I don't think that's exactly true. But, but ever since she surfaced, I, I can't help it. She's been in all my writing, all my story. I, I'm, I'm sketching her. I'm constantly reminded of her and what I'm getting towards is that she keeps showing up in my dreams. What I'm trying to understand is she's the reason that she's starting to feel a bit unsettled, is that right? Well, um, well, okay, when I say this, I know what it's going to remind you of and I, I don't want you to think I've been backsliding again, but hear me out. All right. Me out. John, All right. John, I think I'm missing something. Okay, tell me more about these dreams, Flynn. I'm all ears. All right, well, the first one where I saw her, I was walking at night. I was alone, and she was approaching me. But in the dream, the thing was, I remember I wasn't quite myself. What do you mean? Well... I think we all have an ideal view of ourselves that doesn't quite add up with who we truly are. The, the person we wish we were, or, or, or the, the person we strive to be, the best version of ourselves, I guess you could say, in, in, in this dream, I was definitely the person I wish I was. I, I, I was an exploding life force. I was bursting, no, no restraints, no fear, overwhelmed in the awe of my surroundings, inspired inspired by every snowflake. Total freedom. <laughs> hey! Hey, hey! Hey, uh... Can we just talk? I've never been able to understand why this is so hard, you know? We are both walking alone on this beautiful night. And uh, just look, just look, look around you. Look at the beauty, isn't it amazing? Just Look around you. Do you not see? Do you? I don't think you do. In fact, I, I know you don't. And that is a travesty. That's the saddest story of all. Do you not feel the overpowering weight of the beauty that is around you? Do you not feel it pressing down on you? I feel it pressing on me. You know, here, here. I know. I bet you can hear it. Just, just, just look, 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 look. Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Do you hear it? That's the night. It's this night. It's talking to us. It's saying. Come with me. Come with me. 
Let go of all your insecurities, all your worries, your, your journey for self-actualization. Just come with me. My waters are cool and my breeze is everlasting. Why, why do we do that? Like, we are surrounded by all of this beauty and we just walk past each other, pretending like we don't see the other person. Like, you know what I did? I was pretending not to see you. But in actuality, I wanted to see you. I want you to see me. Hey, 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 look at me. I want to see you. You understand that? <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> no, seriously. I have I I have so much in this head that I can show you. That I can probably offer you. I, if you're willing to let me see you. Because if you're willing to let me see you as a whole, I know for a fact that there is something in there that will change my life forever. Because I, I can tell just by looking at you that you are so beautiful. So, uh, what do you say we talk a while and maybe change each other's lives. Okay. I'm Holly. That's interesting. Holly, eh? It's a nice name. Does that name ring a bell for you? No. And in the dream, her name isn't always the same. But at the same time, it's always a name I can picture her having. You know, if that makes any sense. Okay, and what exactly about this girl's presence in your dreams that makes you feel uneasy? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if uneasy is the right word, but I know it means something very, very important. I, I feel like I'm slowly getting a taste of something that's gonna change my life in a massive way. And it's making me- What, uh, uh, anxious, nervous? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, you know that they're just dreams, Flynn, okay? There, there's nothing you need to actually stress yourself over, oh, right? I'll tell you about the one I had very recently. In this dream, her name is Abigail. I am only visible to her. I don't quite exist in her world, in this dream world. There is nothing there for me other than to be there for her. I can't quite tell if our relationship is romantic or if it's more like Calvin and Hobbes, but either way, I can tell that we really love each other and she really needs me on this night. No! Go, Captain Barnabo! As the first mate pushed the captain over the side of the ship, swim for shore, Captain! Sword in tow feeling the weight of the steel blade, tumbled furiously, <laughs> furiously. I must get there, he said, I must, for the sake of my family. You can do it, you are the man. As if it was a fjord from an ancient Viking story. But into the freezing Caribbean ocean. Like, uh, shouldn't we be talking a little bit more about tomorrow before it gets too late? Yeah, sure, but. Can we wait till the next chapter? It's my favorite part. <laughs> You've read me that book a hundred times. What? We need to talk about something important. Yeah, oh, sure, Abby. Uh, I was just trying to lighten the mood. You know, we've got a big day tomorrow. Exactly. Tomorrow I'm finally leaving this city. Oh, well, that's what you wanted. I am so excited for you. Yeah, I am too. But I'm also really worried about something. Yes? What, what's up? I'm worried about losing you. Losing. <laughs> Abigail, I am yours. 
You will never, ever lose me. <laughs> Flynn, I'm growing up. I'm moving on. I'm not always going to have time for adventures with you pretty soon. Well, why not? Because, Flynn, I'm moving on. It's what happens in life. You meet new people, you make new relationships. You have to start building a life. I love our relationship, Flynn, and I love you, but this is beautiful because it's for right now. What are you saying? You're saying this is our last night? No, that's just it, Flynn. That's what most people would say and do, but I'm not ready to accept that. I'm not ready to leave you behind. I, I want you to come with me. Uh, okay, I'm, I'll do it. Okay, but the only way this can happen is if you do something for me. Yes, anything. I need you to wake up for me. Okay, Charlie. And why exactly did this upset you to this magnitude? No, it was as if at in the final moments of the dream, it became something more than a dream. Charlie, I think... And ever since I woke up, I can't put those final images out of my head. I almost wish that I could just forget this dream like most people do after a few hours. Or sometimes I even wish I could forget her, but she's stayed. She's always there. Why? It was her face. The way she looked at me. I can see it now. As vivid and as crystal clear as this is. The way I felt as she spoke and the way she was looking directly, like directly into my eyes, I am unable to shake that image now. John, I'm unable to shake the feeling that... That watch, Charlie. That, that it was real. You know, that, that in some way I can't yet understand, this girl has arrived in my dreams to communicate with me. I felt her, John. And I feel as if everything inside of me somehow is in orbit with her. That in, in the past, when I was constantly questioning, questioning everything and, 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 and wanted to end my stupid, pointless existence, Charlie. When, when, when I was at my worst and I was at my sickest and you and I worked together to give me those thousand little crutches to stand on and now I could wobble through it you know, just so I could make it through. Charlie. Well, I don't need that anymore. I think I was actually on the right track before. I'm sorry, but I do. I, I don't want the crutches anymore, John. I don't want the antidepressants. I don't want the reciprocal. I don't want the collaterol and the therapy and the distractions and the hobbies and the crutches. I think what she's trying to tell me, John, is that in the end, it was all real. Charlie, I, Charlie, I think it's real. stop. Stop. I want you to do something for me now. I want you to look down at your eggs. How long have we been here, Charlie? Uh, I don't know, I'd say... Uh... Yeah, are you ever gonna dig into those? They must be getting cold by now. Uh, excuse me, waitress. Um, could we have a bill, please, and... Uh... Give me a to-go box for those eggs. Thanks. I haven't you seen me eat these? Charlie Flynn, I'm gonna tell you something and I want you to listen very carefully, okay? Charlie, we all have dreams, all of us. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Did it mean something? Maybe. But I don't think that's important. But it's important that you understand something. These dreams you've been having, they're not real. No, Charlie, look. Look at me. They are not real. They're dreams. And you need to understand that so are you, and that's okay. But you are her dream, Charlie. And so am I. That's okay. I think it's beautiful. How did we get here, Charlie? Is your name Charlie or is it Flynn? No, no. No. 
Wait, I'm real. I know oh, I, I think you are real, Charlie Flynn. The human brain can't create original faces, right? It needs to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. You know, the crazy artist walking down the street she wished to talk to her? Her imaginary childhood friend from a book? Uh, her high school sweetheart? You have so much reality shoved into you, Charlie. If you ask me, you're more real than you could possibly imagine. But I'm... I'm thinking and, and, and I'm feeling how is this possible I that's a big question my friend and I'll admit a little frightening you got me uh, but she, she was talking to me right to me I know she was hey she must really believe in you Flynn after all you were her imaginary friend Charlie please wake up I don't want to let you go I think a part of me always knew that I was her dream, that our story began on borrowed time. But even now, I can feel her moving on, and I'm still not completely sure. Was I her dream, or was she mine? I suppose it doesn't matter. This is our last dream together. She's kept me alive all this time, but she, she needs to move on. Her memories of me are getting pushed deeper and deeper. I don't want to leave. I don't want to go. I've never really been one to embrace endings or listen to my own voice for that matter. So I'm writing you this letter in hopes it keeps our dream alive just a little longer. Because now in the end, can't get your face out of my mind. We're in that field, those stars are falling, and you look so beautiful. I need to get back to writing. I can feel myself thinning. She's forgetting me. And it's okay. It isn't her fault. I'm writing down a story. It's the story of an old man having a dream. He's dreaming of a memory. And in this memory, he's a young boy. He's out with his friends and a girl. They're very happy together. Going to see an old friend. They're going to build a giant wooden ship and sail away together. And then they will be together forever. with words for you and turn the tide start again I'm here and now write me a song a song that sings for so hard to get lost in the water so